common request we hear from our customers is the desire to quickly and easily load data into Redshift from an S3-based data lake. My name is Don Drake. I'm an analytics specialist solutions architect at AWS. Today, I will demo a new feature of the Redshift Query Editor v2, the data import wizard. Let's say you have a new data set and you also have a spreadsheet of a sample of CSV data that you'd like to load into Redshift. We can provide this CSV as part of our create table command and column names and data types will be inferred from this file. So let's go create a table. You can see we have a loads from CSV option. We'll browse for the CSV file. There's our file. And now you can see that the column names and the data types were populated. This is a, a best effort on the data types. I do know that uh, this sales time is a timestamp. So let's just override that real quick. Uh, we're going to give a, a schema name and a table name. We'll just call it Don Sales. And then you could also see that the uh, encoding or the compression uh, could be chosen here as well on a per column basis. We'll just leave that blank and the defaults will be populated. And then there's also other per column options available. So if we go and create this table or we could just open it up in the query editor. Uh, let's uh, format this real quick. We could see uh, our column names and, and data types look good. So let's go ahead and create the table. All right, so there we go. Table easily created. Now let's load some data. So um, we could browse our S3 buckets for data. Um, we can choose a, a folder. We could actually go in and see the, the files that are available. We could load these individually, but we're just going to load all of those files. So we'll just select the folder. We'll say choose um, to copy this data into Redshift. We need to have an IM role that has the permissions uh, to access that S3 location. So we'll set that. We'll tell it it's Parquet. You can see the uh, file uh, options that are available for uh, Parquet. Uh, this was not compressed. And we'll then select our table. And then you can also override the column mappings here as well. Uh, but I'm going to leave that empty because the defaults are good. And we'll just say load data. So now you can see that this uh, created a copy command. And it ran it for us. And so now we can, um, let's do a quick count. So we can see there's about 2.8 million rows in this table. And this load data supports uh, different uh, file types as well. So that was a parquet file. Let's load in uh, some uh, pipe delimited files. We'll choose our role again. This is CSV. Um, the delimiter is a pipe, so let's override that as well. And then uh, we can see the different load operations there. That's good. Uh, and then for data conversions, since this is CSV, uh, there is a header. So we're going to tell it to ignore uh, the header row so it doesn't load a header. We'll say done. We'll choose our table again. And then load data. And again, you can see the different uh, parameters that were provided as part of that copy command uh, to get uh, pipe delimited uh, data loaded. So, um, so, it's, so that was our previous count of sales. And just to verify that data was loaded again, let's rerun this account. And we can see now that um, the count did increase. So today I've shown you how you can quickly create a table from a spreadsheet and populate it using the new load data wizard. Give this feature a try 
and thanks for watching my demo today.